In this video, we're going to begin talking about cookies. And for some people, the idea of cookies sets off alarm bells because they think uh, there's rumors that go around the internet. You know how internet rumors are. Uh, oh no, not cookies. Cookies transmit viruses. Uh, oh, cookies can steal passwords and they'll copy files from your hard drive. None of that is true. A cookie is merely a piece of text a small string that is stored by your web browser. Uh, it really isn't that harmful. Um, most of the time, cookies are used to make the application or the website work better and be more user-friendly. However, some people, like advertisers, um, use cookies to track the websites that you visited. So they can track you through the use of cookies, but that isn't using cookies that are coming from the website you are using. That's a third party cookie. It's an ad that's been embedded on a website, giving you a cookie for a third party site. Uh, there is a simple solution to that. You can disable third party cookies on your web browser. It's in the settings. I'm not going to go into how to do that right here, but just realize cookies make things user friendly. They're not necessarily a bad thing. Third party cookies are not so nice because uh, the advertisers, there's some big advertisers out there. And if, if you go to three or four of their sites, they can track that you've been to three or four of their sites if you allow third party cookies and they can target you with advertising and things like that. Um, so that's kind of an abuse of cookies, but remember you have the ability to block them. Okay. Now that my stump speech is over uh, about cookies, uh, let's take a look at how to work with some cookies. All right. So how do we get cookies? What happens? Uh, so we have a web browser. We make an HTTP request in that web browser for the web server to send us a web page. And part of that web page is going to come back. It's going to send us an HTTP response. And that HTTP response is going to contain the page and possibly cookie built into the page. Then as we're using our web browser, uh, somebody clicks on a link or makes another HTTP request back to the same server it sends a copy of the cookie along with it. And then we can do more HTTP responses, uh, but that cookie gets transmitted back every single time. And it just enables some things on the web server side of things to keep track of what the user is doing so that maybe they don't have to constantly be uh, filling out their name on a form that we're using, or maybe it can be user-friendly by stating their name. Hello, George, welcome back to the website. Yeah, things like that. Um, cookies have attributes. They have a max age attribute, which come, comes to be very important. We'll talk about that in a minute on how that might work. Uh, but that max age tells how long the cookie is going to live on our web browser, and it's measured in seconds. Okay, uh, Usually it's a very big number because we want to keep track of something for days, so we have to calculate uh, the max age that we want that cookie to live in the user's web browser. Uh, we can specify a path, uh, which will tell us the path on the web server that can see the cookie. A lot of times that's just a slash. Hey, we want everywhere they go on our web server to be able to see their cookie. We can also set a domain uh, and we can list the domain names that can see the cookie. Uh, and we can also do a secure attribute. If that attribute's present, the cookie has to be encrypted when it's transmitted. It can only be transmitted when the browser and server are connected by HTTPS. If it's an HTTP only website, then there's no secure option. Um, it won't let it happen. So here's a couple examples of cookies. Uh, here's one uh, with the name email. Email equals grace at yahoo.com. So they're, they're basically key value pairs. We have a name and a value. So email equals grace at yahoo.com, path equals, and it just has a forward slash. Here's one username equals ghopper, uh, max age equals uh, 
1,814,400 seconds, which I believe uh, we'll see here in a little bit. I think it's 21 days. And the path is equal to that. So a couple examples of cookies, just a string of text. And we have to process those. So we do a lot of string manipulation. So if you think back to some of the chapters where we talked about string manipulation and how to process strings, we're going to do a lot of that when we start working with cookies. Some things you need to know about cookies. Well, we've just talked in general about what cookies are, but there are a couple different kinds. Session cookies are cookies that only live while that browser session is active. Meaning once we close the browser, that cookie's gone. It doesn't live anymore. Or once a new tab is opened, cookie doesn't live anymore. Uh, at least it doesn't live on the new tab. If we go back to the tab where it was established, it'll still be there. Uh, and then we have persistent cookies. Persistent cookies are the ones that have the max age set. So if we don't set a max age, it's a session cookie and it only lives while the user is currently using that site. If we set a max age, it's a persistent cookie and it will persist as long as that age uh, lasts from the time we set it till however many seconds have passed. Um, there's also a couple functions for working with cookies. They are encode a URI component and a decode URI component. And the reason is because cookie values can't include semicolons, they can't include commas, and they can't include white space. So if you've ever uh, typed something, maybe your first name and last name on a form, uh, George Jetson with a space in it, and then you've looked at the URL later and you see George% 20 Jetson. Okay. That comes from encode URI component converting that white space because they can't be used that white space gets converted uh, to a percent 20 which is a, the, the asking number for a space uh, decode uri component reverses that process okay so those are two functions that we can use when we're working uh, with these components with these cookies all right so how do we create a session cookie well, it's a lot of string processing, as I said. So creating a cookie, let cookie equal, and it's just starting out as a string with the word tasks equal. Okay. Now cookie plus equals, we're going to concatenate something onto tasks equal. Okay. So this is all coming from an application that we're going to see in a minute. So we're kind of breaking down the application before we see the application. So we're going to concatenate onto task equal we're going to concatenate uh, feed dog backslash n that's a new line character which is a white space character white space cannot be encoded in a, in a cookie um, so that backslash n will be converted by this encode uri component okay so feed dog new line water space another another item uh, that can't be use directly so feed dog and water plants are the two lines for our tasks basically separated by new line character all right so we put task equals feed dog and water plants and now we're going to add in path uh, so cookie plus equals and we're going to add a semicolon because these different items have to be separated by semicolons so we're concatenating on the word path and a forward slash okay so all of this is just building up a string a string that said tasks equal and then we encode this so that it works properly uh, and we add the path onto the end of it uh, and then we actually create the cookie right here where we say document dot cookie so we're calling the cookie property of the document uh, and we're taking that string and setting that value to that cookie. Okay. Everything, this first three lines up here was string processing. This is the place where we set the cookie. We can generate the cookie however we want, but it's as simple as taking the text that is stored in this variable and assigning it to document.cookie.
All right, this one's going to create another example that's creating a persistent cookie. The one that will live after the browser closes for the next time we come back to the website. So same thing, task equals, uh, and then cookie we're going to concatenate on to that uh, string variable. Uh, feed dog and water plants, just like we did before. This time we're going to concatenate in semicolon, max age equals, and this is 21 days times 24 hours in a day times 60 minutes in an hour times uh, 60 seconds in a minute. And I believe that equals that value we saw back on the previous screen. So this is a, a, a cookie that will age out after 21 days. Okay. And then we add the path again. Again, everything up here with string processing processing to set all the different values we want to use as a string and then we assign that string to document.cookie. Adding multiple cookies to the document. You can use multiple cookies on the same document as long as they have different names. So here we have a cookie that is and, and notice we're not doing any URI encoding because we're not doing anything fancy with any spaces or new line characters. Uh, email equals john at doe.com path equals forward slash taking those two this one's name is email we set it to document.cookie here's another cookie with username okay username equals g hopper this is a persistent cookie username equals g hop hopper max age equals 1,814,400 seconds path equals forward slash Here is another cookie being set, but this time it is email equals, and it matches this email up here. Because they have the same name, email, this one will replace the first one. So if you try to set two cookies with the same name, the second, the last one you set replaces the previous ones, obviously. Um, so three lines of code here, only two cookies ended up being added. Uh, the last one we set with email was grace at yahoo.com uh, and username G Hopper got set at this one. This one was overridden by the last one we did. All right, so set cookie function. It's a nice little piece of code to add into a website for when you're trying to add a cookie. You put it in your JavaScript, you can reuse it as many times as you want. So it's a little function called set cookie. Uh, and basically it's just performing a function for us to, to, to build up those strings. Uh, it lets us set a cookie. We can specify the cookie's name, we can specify its value, and we can specify how many days as arguments when we call set cookie. So down here you can see they're calling set cookie with tasks, water plants, 21 days. It calls this function up here. What does the function do? It creates a cookie variable. We could call this variable anything we wanted. It doesn't have to be named cookie. Name equals, uh, notice it's using URI encoding uh, for the value that was passed in, in case there might be any spaces or semicolons or illegal characters in it. So it's concatenating those onto the name. So name equals concatenating on the value that was passed in here, the encoded value. If there's a value for days, so we're saying if days, because uh, JavaScript would let us leave this off if we wanted to. So if they actually pass in a number of days, it's going to create a persistent cookie uh, by setting the max age and it's concatenating that onto the cookie variable max age equals the number of days times 24 times 60 times 60. Okay and then we're can concatenating on the path equals in just the root directory. Finally we take that string we build up after the after it's called and pass those things in. That string that's built up is called cookie and we're setting document.cookie equal to that string. That's a nice reusable function. We can call it over and over and over to set all the different cookies we want to set. Um, all right, 
So let's look at the other direction. So we've learned about how to set cookies. Now let's learn how to decode them. All right, let's assume that there are three, co uh, three cookies set in the document.cookie object. Okay. One is username equals ghopper. Another one status equals active. Another one's task equals water plants. And there you can see that percent 20, that encoded space right there. So those, let's pretend those cookies already exist in our document.cookie object. Here is a small function we can use to try and pull those individual values out when we want to. So this function is called get cookies by name and it allows the user, whoever's calling this function, to pass in the name. So that's our parameter. All right. So it's getting document.cookie and storing it in this cookies. Uh, it's a string. So now we have to go out and process this big string. If we want to get the status, we got to find the status, we got to find the equal sign, and we got to get the the things that come after it, right? That's how we process it. We have to break the string back down. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, we first off, we have to find out where that name starts. So we're going to call cookies and then we're going to use some string processing. Index of whatever name they passed in here for the name of the cookie they're trying to get. We're going to look for that name in this giant string. So if I was looking for uh, status, it would try and find the index of the place where it says status equals. Okay. So status equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I don't know. It's, it's like an index 20 or something. I, I'm not going to take the time to count them. You don't want to listen to that. Okay. What if that name didn't exist? That's a possibility. If the start, meaning... If index, if index of doesn't find whatever name they passed in, it's going to return a negative one. So if start is equal to negative one, there is no cookie by that name, and it returns an empty string, and the function's over. But if it did find it, if start is not equal to negative one, it's going to do what's in the else block here. It's going to adjust, uh, it's going to get the cookie value, adjust so that the name and equal sign aren't included in the result. Okay, so we find the place where that name started. And again, I said status and I guessed 20, so let's pretend it is 20. I don't know what it's actual index of. We're going to change that start value to start plus the length of the name plus one. So we're going to move it up to the length of the name plus one. Uh, so that we're going to get whatever comes after the equal sign is the start. So we're resetting our start value from the beginning of this. If that was 20, now it's 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. And we're going to be starting on the A now. If I was, if the status was the name I passed in. Okay. So we're moving our start spot over the length of that name. Trying to find out this value that goes with the name we passed in. All right, now we're going to do index of, and we're going to be looking for a semicolon, but we don't want to start looking for a semicolon at the beginning. We want to start looking at the place we said to start. Okay, so it's going to find the next semicolon after that starting spot using index of. Again, string processing, very important. Okay, if it doesn't find a semicolon, that means we're at the end of the cookie. So there doesn't have to be a semicolon at the end of a cookie. So if it doesn't find a semicolon after that starting position, it's going to return index of will return a negative one. And that means it was the last cookie. And we can just set the end of what we're trying to get out as the length of the entire cookie. Okay. So now we have a start value and we have an end value. Okay. So now we can go to cookies and do a dot substring and pull out the string that starts at the position we said to start and ends at the position that we calculated for the end. And then we need to decode it, that value, and return the result. So if I would have passed in status 
get cookie by name and passed in status, it would have found this index for the start position. It would have moved it over to here for the start. Then it would have found the semicolon and that would be the end. And then that substring would have pulled out from the start, which is the A to the E, uh, which is was the end. And it pulled out the word active and returned it to us. So get cookie by name, get the status, and it would return the word active. That's a lot of decoding, a lot of string manipulation with cookies. And down here, they called get cookie by name and they called tasks. If we remember back here, tasks was right there. It did the same thing. It found this starting position, moved it over to the W, found the end. There was no semicolon, so it used the end of the entire thing. And it pulled out water percent 20 plants, uh, but said decoding the URI component tasks ultimately got set to water space plants because the decode URA turned that percent 20 back into a space. How do I delete a cookie? All right, I set a task called feed dog and I told it to last 21 days. Uh, later on, maybe somebody wanted to delete that task as part of this application we're going to be looking at in the next video. How do I do How do I delete a cookie that's set to persistent? Um, I just set its max age to zero. So I go find that cookie. I can concatenate on task equals. So that's the name of my cookie. I can concatenate on max equals zero. I can concatenate on the path. And then I set that cookie with max age of zero to document.cookie. And it's gone. That deletes a cookie. So we don't actually delete it. We set its max age to zero, and by setting its max age to zero, the browser gets rid of it. So here's a delete cookie function we can use, where the person can just pass in the name of the cookie they want to delete, and it takes document cookie equals name, sets its max age to zero uh, directly right there, nice and simple, and whatever name we pass in here, it deletes that particular cookie. We would just call this function by saying delete cookie called tasks. We'll see later on. There's easier ways to do this. Cookies are kind of old school. There's a few other uh, things we can do on newer browsers that work a little bit differently than cookies. All right, in the next video, we'll take a look at the application uh, where some of this code came from uh, and to see an actual working application using old school cookies.